there is a totally different energy around here on Wednesdays, and I think it has everything to do with Mad Dog Russo and being on first take. I'm I'm gonna say it's that, and not that uh, Wednesday is Mike's off day. But Billy came in here today, and he was roaring like a wrestler. Yes, and he was shouting at me. And it's not a Billy I've seen before. Today is maximum fun day. Yep. Just she was shouting no, about fun. No, 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 no. Not a, what he said. It is a slight misrepresentation. No. Listen, I, I walked in with you, and I'm telling you, that's not what Billy okay, said. That was, okay. I quoted no. him incorrectly. Please, Billy, you said it so much better. I'm sorry. I said, I Dan, <coughs> Stugatz, bad news today. Yep, bad news. <laughs> we had a meeting in the elevator. And we decided today's fun being turned up to 150 percent 150 percent so beyond maximum yeah. turn though. but we also yeah. then said roy was assigned fun captain for the day and oh, we no. have to match his level of fun the but told roy in the elevator roy you got 10 15 minutes to get us to the fun that we need to be at and if we're not there we're gonna have to reassign the fun captain for the day put it on the poll please is roy fun reluctant <laughs> because uh, Roy, it, Roy, I do not, unless he's well into the liquor, yeah. the, the good, good brown stuff, mm -hmm. I rarely get a Roy who lets go of all of the repressions and and just has wild fun. However, I have not been as a fan to a sporting event with Roy in a very long time where it's just me and him, no. so some people might get a different Roy Not there. the Roy. The Roy that we have never seen, and I don't know that we're going to see it in this environment, to be honest with you, just because of, you know, NABJ Roy yeah. is the yeah. one Ooh. that we need to get yeah. to, yeah. and really? I don't think we're going to get that here. Mm. Yeah. He's in Vegas this year. Wow. The, con the convention is in Vegas this oh, year. Oh, wow. Oh, we got to send you, don't August. we? Yes, you got to send me. Yeah, send me a call. Yeah. Well, yeah. we got to get content though of the di of the different secret Roy, right? This is, we are going to be promised Vegas Roy, a Roy no one's ever seen, right? Yeah, that's right. We we got to like send him wearing a wire and like a and a secret. Not a wire. A wire. I'm not a wire. I'm not a wire. I'm not a wire. Jesus Christ! A bad idea. He's black. He's got to go. Jesus, you just told on yourself. Black journalist, you want, mm. what do you think they're saying there? Co-op. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be clear, though. Roy has the C on his chest. He is the captain of fun today. That's right. Okay. For the first 10 to 15 minutes. All right. And you then got 10 minutes to go, Roy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the way it was described was, Roy, we need you to be our Juan Pierre today. Get on base. Get us started. To which he said, "I'm going to pop up." And I go, "Roy, Juan Pierre didn't pop up." That is that is that is exactly how Roy begins a Wednesday fun day. I'm going to pop up. I believe that that sort of uh, he carries that anchor around with him at all times. But you're promising me fun, though, Billy. Why why is it that you think today is going to be extra special fun? Why are we turning it up to 150? What What is it? 150 degrees. We have to turn up to 150 degrees. Degrees? We have to, yeah. No, it's not oh, a What are you, day. baking? Kind of ridiculous. <laughs> by, by, by the way, I have a question for the bakers here, which, Jess, you, you love baking. Why does stoves start below, like, 300? Like, what can you possibly, like, cook in a stove from, like, zero to, like, 300 degrees? No one ever yes, uses, like, what? oh, let me set it to 127 today. No one ever does yeah, that. Yeah, if you're making, like, meringue or a pavlova, yeah. you need to cook at a very low temperature. Mm, okay. By the way, uh, I'm not fun reluctant. Um, reluctant. Um, uh, the top risk one. averse. Yeah, that's 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 mm, what I mm, risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who has the A on their chest, though, Billy? Who's our assistant captain? Admiral. Oh. Mm. <laughs> David Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, I think, I think that uh, you are not in any way an expert baker, and I I am not either. But it seems like Jessica really put you in your place. That you sounded very ignorant yeah. there about uh, what you were saying. Sorry, like Bill. you're a real amateur baker. Well, I cook like four things. And they're all like 300. And, I, and when I reheat pizza, which is really my specialty, is reheating pizza from the day before, it's always like 350, 400. Yeah. Ooh. So yeah. you're going to wait till you're going to eat pizza, I feel like. I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like if you want to keep something warm, you put it in at like 200 or like 150 just to get keep it the oven a little warm, but not keep cooking it. Billy, are you blaspheming against the air fryer? The air fryer is wonderful. No, I just didn't know that you could put pizza in an air fryer. It, well, it's also, I feel like most air fryers aren't big enough to get like a real big Man, slice of pizza right, in yeah, there. Yeah. But I, for me, as a reheating device, 
I don't think there has been a greater innovation in reheating technology than the air fryer. <laughs> it is extraordinary. For me, the levels above that it is on the microwave and the toaster oven is yes. absolutely yes. astounding. It is. I had two week old chicken wings, yes. chucked what? them in the air fryer. Are you and kidding me? As good as you new. throw those they away. Were, I shit you what? not. They were as two good weeks. as new. I, I'm with two week old chicken Whitty, wings. Whitty, Whitty, I'm, I'm with you on this. You. you put some olive oil on them, throw them in the air fryer, good as new, two even weeks. if you can get salmonella. If you're just eating fried salmonella, it's still That's delicious. why you might have tummy problems not going to Mexico. Exactly. Hey, yep. You know, and the, the tummy problems did coincide with eating though, eating those. So perhaps you're right. I, but from a taste perspective, as good as new. No, as a matter no, of fact, no, as a matter no, of fact, right. as, no, as a matter of fact, they're better. 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 They're in the air, the air fryer has better. revolutionized no, they, yeah. reheating. To the I'm point telling you that you're wrong. I'm yeah. telling okay. you, two week old chicken. Look no. me in my eyes. No, nope. I will not look you in the eyes. I don't respect you anymore. Better than they were originally. <laughs> we're having fun, huh? You should open a restaurant. The captain. Where, where we, you, like, we like to have fun here. You should just open a restaurant where you air fry two week old food and serve it to people. But charge like, a ton. Like yeah, yeah. $50 right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wins. It's it's like it's a niche concept. Ooh, call it past due. Ooh. Mm. Another podcast idea for sausage fingers. He's writing them all down. He's trying to make all past sorts due. of businesses. He's trying to he's trying to past figure due. out who's gonna produce his next big hit. He writes them down every day on different pieces of paper. And then I throw them in the and garbage. And leaves them behind or forgets about them. But he writes down the ideas. Do, do you still have uh, Richard Jefferson's top five contenders oh, written wow, down somewhere? Yeah. Or? Let me see. Did yeah. it change last night? There yeah, was a yeah. game. They played. It was close. And Philadelphia and Milwaukee. And it was exciting. And the top of the East is exciting. And the Miami Heat play an important game against the Celtics. And Stu Gutz did indeed keep his <laughs> list of Richard Jefferson's top five contenders. He has found it under a piece of pecan pie crumb that's over there <laughs> near his keyboard. Since we're in the local hour, I want to talk about the team that's number four on that list, which is the Miami Heat. Yes. I've listened to a lot of uh, NBA podcasts, uh, national NBA podcasts, since the Jimmy Butler thing happened. And it seems like everyone's got a, well, there's more there, but I just can't tell you about it take like all like all the national NBA people are like, yeah, we've heard some stuff, but and I feel like we're heading for Jimmy Butler departs the Heat organization, and there's going to be like a 4,000 word The Athletic piece on what happened during the Jimmy Butler era in Miami. But the, 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 the noise there is that there's something well beyond just Eric Spolster through a clipboard at him. Well, let's, uh, let's examine this for a moment. He's a pain in the ass. I mean, I'm sorry. He, he, uh, can he was be... meant to be a reformed pain in the ass, yeah, though. Yeah, I know. Culture. Well, uh, right. let, no, no. Don't do reformed pain in the ass. These people arrive as adults, and you now have to build around them, and you, uh, you build your culture around them because the Miami Heat, having taken the Showtime Lakers and reinvented them in the modern age, Pat Riley had to learn on the job. Oh, I've got to bend to the will of Shaquille O'Neal and all his handlers and publicists. He comes down and he makes me uh, instantly matter in a way that the franchise hasn't. And then LeBron, and they keep building all of that, and they have to endure, you know, Maverick Carter asking for hundreds of season tickets just because, hey, it's LeBron and it's a salary cap. And no, no, we have to, like, come on, there's salary cap rules. You can't just do that. But of course, they want to come in and run the organization because they know LeBron's value, and the Heat have organizationally bent against that, right? You've had to see Pat Riley and Eric Spolstra from his video room sort of change around Dwayne Wade's the star. He's carrying us. He carries Spo here. Spo doesn't matter if Dwayne Wade doesn't exist. And then Dwayne brings LeBron. And now the permutation of it, as Riley wants to get in the game at the end, is, okay, we stole Jimmy Butler. And Jimmy Butler is a pain in the ass. And everyone knows it, and he's hard on everyone. Maybe it fits for a while, and they get to the finals. And look at that. Jimmy Butler is really great. And then they have what's happened this season. I don't know if there's an expiration date on where Jimmy Butler wears thin on people, right? The Warriors even winning all the time. It came apart. Durant and Draymond winning up there is hard. A lot of ego. Everybody fighting over a bunch of different things. And it's just hard to get to the top of that sport and... They have expiration dates, some of these teams that go hard on conflict. 
But if I'm Jimmy, I'm saying to myself, I'm the best player on the one seed in the East, one of the best teams in the NBA. I don't know if this happens anywhere else, right? And he has, like, that has to make him happy. He's never been the number one guy in a team that's really, really good. I don't know how much happy is the Jimmy Butler fuel, honestly. I don't want to go too deep on this stuff, but I don't know if this dude just really likes conflict. I don't. It just really right. likes. Yeah. It keeps him entertained, engaged, whatever. I I don't know him well enough. He, we we had one interview with Jimmy Butler, and it went very poorly. Uh, we were asking him about the homeless cause that he was backing, and I asked what I thought was an innocent question, which was like, "Is this a personal cause to you? Is there a story in in the unhoused that uh, speaks to you?" And he did not like the question, or maybe thought I was assuming that he grew up homeless. And so the interview went poorly, and I've never talked to him since. So I can't pretend to know this person, but I know this organization. And I've been asking around because of what Whittingham is saying, which is just this nebulous reporting around Jimmy Butler. Like, there's stuff there. Hey, random stuff from an organization that you just saw recently does propaganda on its broadcast. I can report that, though. Like, someone give me the stuff, you know? I, I want the stuff, too, but he does wear thin quickly. But I will ask you this because I've done some actual reporting on, well, what happened those four games with the Heat? That was all very weird. It 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 seems outside of what this organization ever is. Yeah, everyone's competitive. No one likes to lose, but not that. What was that? That seemed like it had resentments in it from whatever's happening before. What was explained to me is that the seasons recently have been weird, that they don't practice at all. They don't practice. The team, it goes weeks without having a practice because you got to protect the bodies and everything else. And then they've got to bring in two guys who haven't played in Morris and Oladipo to see if they can figure out, hey, are these guys going to knock out Struess and everyone else when the playoffs get really hard and we got to beat Giannis and it's the last five minutes of the game and all these guys who made us the one seed this season, they're not actually going to be playing. Can Oladipo and Morris get playoff minutes? But they haven't played in months and doctors are arguing about whether Oladipo should be playing at all this year. Like, I don't think, I think Oladipo's done in Miami. I think this year he's not going to give them they, that he should wait until next year to recover fully on his body. But that determination had to be made with minutes and spacing, right. and they played poorly when more, when trying to work in two guys, and, and Morris hasn't played in four months and had a whole nother doctor issue that wasn't unlike the Chris Bosh issue, where he wants to really play because he's mercenary at the end of his career, need to make a splash, need to get to the next contract. And it's like, no, 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 we need to make sure that you're healthy splash and a, you know, a wrestling match occurs there. I, I think they, they, they put in a new protocol after the Chris Bosch stuff with like, you have to go to multiple doctors in order to make sure that everyone's clean here. Cause you don't want a liability of something really awful happening. And in working those two guys in, they had all sorts of problems with the doing of that. And in the middle of it, they lose and then they get the Jimmy Butler explosion. So you tell me what you think happened there because Jimmy Butler's been a pain in the ass for, you know, for game losing streak or dragging you to the finals. Right. But they were just losing and they were losing because they're trying to work in new guys after succeeding all season and new guys need money and new guys need the ball and all this organizational stuff about team that becomes hard when you got, 15 guys playing for you, and some of them are playing for contracts. Like, Oladipo wants to be good again. Do you play him? Because he looked pretty ordinary out there. I play him if he helps. Otherwise, I don't. I but mean, they, had to make, they had to make that determination, and while making it, they gave up four games. Right. Well, and also, they were playing so well without them that maybe there's a theory, why are we bringing these people in when we are the one seed without their help? But like you said, the Heat do kind of need to level up a little bit here because Milwaukee are an incredible threat. Boston, up until the Robert Williams injury, looked like a formidable threat. They were 24-4. and four. Their net rating was plus 16. Like, the Heat needed to jump a level. And in theory, Morris and Oladipo present that jump up. But it, it hasn't worked out. And yeah, I mean, losing, I imagine, losing at home to the, to the Knicks, losing at home to the Nets... That, and, and it was meant to be a period where the Heat established some distance between themselves as the one seed. They had 11 out of 12 games they had at home. home games. And, they, and, they, and now they're like at Boston. They have like some really tough games coming up here.
Uh, Williams, there was just a report from Woj here. He'll be back for, it looks like four to six weeks, and he will be back for the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs, if yeah. the Celtics are still there, which is big for the Celtics. But it's it's like they're going to shave his meniscus yeah, as opposed to completely you know repairing it, which is what, what's kept uh, Wiseman out for an entire season in, in Golden State. But help me, Stugant, on what the analysis should be when presented with everything that I just presented to you about spacing and technicalities and basketball stuff that's dramatic, not dramatic and super boring, right? Who cares what, why PJ Tucker can't make threes from the corner all of a sudden? Like, right. What I, I like, we can analyze all the little details and why they lost four in a row, and it was confusing because they gave up their could be whole, a bad stretch, and that's and, it. And I it mean, could be tanking. Spend, I think playing, you, well, you, tanking you, certainly. Yes, tanking because yes. you don't want to see the Nets as well. You don't want to see the Nets. Tanking is certainly a, a a possibility, a real possibility. In fact, I don't think the Heat are the only ones tanking. I think multiple teams right now are trying to avoid the Brooklyn Nets. No one wants that in the first round. The first round is supposed to be like an appetizer to the main course. No one wants to go straight to the main course. Everyone loves appetizers, Dan. <laughs> the Heat, the Heat don't do that. I think the Sixers oh, are. They're doing it. Wake up. No, wake up. They're doing it. Okay, but, but the Heat don't do. They're doing it. Come on, wake well, they did it. Stop once. it with your culture. Yeah, they did. They did it once. They did it once to tank for Justice Winslow when they played. I believe one of the funniest box scores of all time, which is, I believe at the end of the 2015 season. When they played uh, Zoran Dragic 41 minutes and Udonis Haslam 48 minutes or something like that, it's one of the greatest box scores of all time. Uh, but I, can I, you I, find it for us? Yes, when you're I will done, do. Whenever you're done speaking, I'd like to hear some more from that box score. Can I ask you a question, Woody? Yeah, because you're a very smart guy. If you ran the Heat, would you rather play the Nets in the first round, or would you rather play the Raptors in the first round? I, in my history of being a Heat fan, I've been infuriated at the Heat's lack of desire to lose sometimes. Because, like, for example, when they okay. were 11 and 30 and they went 30 and 11 in the second half of a season, which they didn't need to, and they ended up overpaying James Johnson, Hassan White, and Deion <laughs> Waiters as a result, that was as unproductive of a 30 wins as a team has ever had. That, that uh, they tricked Pat Riley. Yes. <laughs> they tricked him. In every respect. Well, and they also, but they also let him believe in his own magic That's for a right. little bit. They did. That's how they tricked him. They tickled him in the ego. I can win with Deion Waiters. Look at this. Look at what I can do with Deion Waiters, Hassan Whiteside, and James Johnson. Gave oh. him a combined two hundred and ten oh, million dollars in how contracts. How did they get out from Not under his that? finest moment? How that did they Memphis get out trade is one of the greatest sorcery. trades of all time. What sorcery to get out from under all of that? <laughs> but uh, the, so so the Heat the Heat don't do that. But Philly, the way that they've been. Oh my God! Bless you. Sorry. Bless you. Oh, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Pollen is back. Uh huh. Dan. We... <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it went away last year because we were all inside. <laughs> Jessica, I'm not joking when I say I think that should forevermore become something that whenever we're talking too much heat around here, that sound deed towards us. Like all that we hear because that sneeze felt like we're on 10th Avenue, 10th Street. <laughs> it felt like it it started about eight. We're fine. <laughs> I can't I can't sneeze on command. If I could, then I, I would use it as a segue opportunity, but it just it happens sometimes, especially in this room. It is pollen season again. Pollen should get it, should get her some pollen, black pepper. Yeah. That should help. I don't think pollen, pollen outside, pollen. right? But like the po pollen in Miami. Black mold. There is maybe. pollen in Miami. <laughs> I read an entire article about it this weekend because I was like walking around living my life and all of a sudden I was like, Holy shit, my eyes are itchy. Yeah. My throat's starting to get itchy. I don't usually get spring allergies. What's going on? And then I Googled it. I found a University of Miami study. Apparently, pollen no, in fake. South Florida in from um, March until May is the strongest season, and it intensifies, is intensifying right now. Tree pollen. The trees are blooming, Tony. It's pollen. Never seen any pollen in there. That's not, that's me. Uh, Roy, uh, please, the black pepper. What I did not know is that yeah. some, is that a known thing? Yeah, that's a very yeah, that's a known thing. If you like, put some black pepper. Sometimes oh, yeah. it goes up in the air, and you inhale it, and then it. Forces you to sneeze. So I, I should just do that when, to like so, interrupt so that, the So segment. that helps with the allergies, okay, right? Yes, yes. No, it doesn't no, help with allergies. No, he's saying to force me to force, sneeze. Uh, like that I can't sneeze. Right. I, I, got, I get what Roy's saying. Mm -hmm. Roy is saying, is that, a hum, is that a human resources problem that we where we would just ask her live and on cue to provide sneezes for us this because we've got a tray of black pepper near her? This show has <laughs> enough issues with peppers. Uh, yeah, I'm not going yeah. near any pepper <laughs> while I'm on this show. Forget I said it.
<clears throat> Supodity covered that it's a pretty hefty loss for the Chiefs. Uh, it is a hefty we're, loss. We're talking about Mahomes and Tyreek Hill being one of the best quarterback wide receiver yes. combinations. How many YOLO Tyreek's got to be down there type of moments? And now it may change Pat Mahomes and his game some. Will it though? Like, is he one of those quarterbacks where he makes the wide receiver great and not no the other else, way around? I mean, no one else can do what Tyreek Hill did for that team with the same amount of regularity. Like, he'll hit Hardman streaking down, but Tyreek Hill is – there really isn't a comp for him at the position. I will say this, Mike. Turning a fifth-round pick into that many draft – getting all the production from the fifth-round pick, winning a Super Bowl with the fifth-round pick, getting to another Super Bowl with the fifth-round pick – as being a major part of your offense, and then taking that, if you believe your quarterback's going to be good with any wide receivers, uh, taking that and getting five draft picks for it is pretty I, good. I believe – I'm not coming out with a, the take that I don't believe Patrick Mahomes is still going to be good. I, I still believe he's going to be good, but Tyreek Hill was a very effective decoy, too, in opening things up for everybody else. Not, not just decoy. Space creator, just because you had to overload places, you could not. It was not humanly possible to cover both those dudes, Kelsey and Hill, even if you knew what they were going to do. You remember the Super Bowl. I'm sorry, no. When the Chiefs lost to Brady and Gronk, what I believe to be the greatest victory in the Patriots era because they had to go on the road. There was a play that the Chief, who was the safety? The Chief, was Eric Berry? That that they all knew what yeah, the play was. They and they couldn't stop it. There right. was no stopping. Effectively ended Eric Berry's career. The, the throw from Brady to Gronk was an unstoppable thing that they had perfected with their chemistry. Kansas City had two of those. Not one, two, and it made Sammy Watkins not be as much of a stiff there. And it made Hartman a name that you knew. And it made all of their running backs an interchangeable mishmash of you could put anybody back there because those two guys, nobody in the league, nobody in the league has two that cannot be guarded when you have the chemistry between the quarterback and the tight end or the speedster. I get what you're saying. I'm not I don't want to paint a picture that it's not going to hurt the Chiefs, but if you truly believe this is all I'm trying to say. If you believe in that quarterback and you believe that quarterback to be Tom Brady type good, Brady got it done with Moss, he got it done with Troy Brown, he got it done with any wide receivers that he had. And so if you believe that then getting five picks for Tariq Hill seems like a pretty good return on your investment. Well, I think also part of that quarterback making anybody good is they paid that quarterback a lot of money. Yes. And this is one of those things that you have to swallow when you look at your cap situation. Can't sign everyone. Their I can't window, have the highest paid wide receiver in the league, too. Their best window was when they had value at quarterback. The best window of anyone. Russell Wilson is now... In Denver, Russell Wilson is putting on uh, Twitter and social media the most cliched of things, do guys, because this is how Russell Wilson does these things. He's, it's like he's reading from a manual. They thought I was done. I told him I'm just getting started. <laughs> it's like a movie trailer. Wow. Yes. Did you guys? Did you guys see? You know, when Russell was with the Seahawks, he had Go Hawks. Yeah. That was his thing. At the end of every interview, he would work that in. So I was thinking, as soon as he went to the Broncos, the first thing I thought of, I was like, "What's his new thing going to be with the Broncos?" You know, giddy up. What Billy was workshopping maybe a. Just yeah, a, maybe it should be a nail. Like just. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and then he just gallops away. Now I haven't heard him interviewed yet, so I haven't heard him. But I yeah. did see a hashtag in one of his tweets a few days ago. Hashtag Let's Ride. Ooh, so maybe that's, that's he's decided nice. that. It's, not bad a horse. Yeah. But I think a nay, a nay at the end of every interview would have been <laughs> yes. the winning yeah. spot there. But I just mm. love how much he, like he he. I just love that he thinks he's like I need a new saying. Like I can't he go does. to the Broncos without saying hashtag Let's Ride. Let's ride is the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. that's what he's gone with. I don't like it. Because now I'm seeing this press conference like photo shoot, and it says "Let's ride" with the horse emoji. Yeah, that's so what I mean. He's already like, got a thing. The horse that's emoji good. now. Nice. Go Hawks was really that's cool a good though. One. Let's ah. ride because it's a horse. Yeah, get it. It's but I, I think a nay would have been yeah. at the end of every interview. Yeah. It's awfully <laughs> close to "Let's go." Tom Brady. Tom Brady is trying to uh, grab the corner. Let's go. Russell Wilson is taking. <laughs> Let's ride. I just love because you know in his mind he's like, this is important. Is I need important. this. I can't be Russell Wilson unless I have my little catchphrase. Who who had 
LFG first, though. Was it Tom Brady or was it the U.S. Women's National mm. Team? I heard Tony say that Tom Brady has the LFG yeah, thing yeah, now. Yeah. But Enable. that's that was like the name of their documentary. That's yeah. been like the rallying cry about their equal pay lawsuit. I don't know who had it first or if anyone can even claim it. Brady is a thousand years old, so maybe it was Bra Brady. Well, Brady is. Yes. But, Brady is. I don't think anyone's allowed to have the claim to the most obvious and overused wired for sound there is, which is anytime you go an, to an athlete on any field, no matter what the dramatic moment, how well they've succeeded, let's go, let's bleeping go is like the signature thing that everyone says. I don't think Brady gets to have that just because he's the greatest. No, he does. That's how it works. Brady is the greatest. It doesn't. Brady takes what he wants it doesn't matter if he said it first all he has to do is say i said it first and even, who's gonna doubt even, tom brady right, even if it's an equal pay equal rights yeah. and the women were there first this Megan seems Rapino to be kind of great this, early lord kind of great it's a bit selfish i'm saying right. world cup team was like probably the greatest of all time don't get mad at me get mad at brady okay i mean well you just you're the you, one that said he could take you it. Just, i'm just telling you that's you, how tom you, you, thinks okay but right. okay that is didn't seem like it seemed like you were making the argument that he takes what he wants and it's allowed. Now it you're does. now you're walking that back. But getting back to the original conversation that we were having, as you got scared and ran away Ooh. because there was uh, something <laughs> some, something opposite you that Sweating. you're like I ran right past equal pay because I just wanted to say that Brady takes what he wants. <laughs> But every once in a while, even Stugatz's comedy moves need to be changed by the times. You ran into one of the obstacles that you fear, which is equal pay. It's Jess, I mean. For, for women, uh, ruining the fun of the show again, as the men just want to be left to their misogynies and unequal pay. You said that, not me. No, I mean, no, 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 I no. I'm so happy you're here, Jess. Now you've gone too far. <laughs> Why do you doubt that? I am. Because you did an entire stupidity episode um, about how jealous you are of me and my new show with well, Mike. That's what happens when you're not there. I mean, see? <laughs> I listened to it, Stugatz. You were coming out... You were coming after us. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I was very upset because, uh, well, for listening. <laughs> that was not a compliment. It was, it was she you, listened. Listen, you, you want to get to the crux listen, of the situation. Listen. You Always took, listening. You <laughs> took my Golic. I mean, <laughs> I mean, not I, Mike Golic. My Golic? My Golic, yes. Oh. That's a my whole Golic. new show. You yes. should have the My which, which Golic Which one's your Golic? Golic? <laughs> I'm a little confused. Which one's yours? Whoever's doing something for me at the time. Okay? Golic and sketchy. <laughs> Billy, I believe that you should hey, try right. and go after after all of ESPN's uh, intellectual properties by changing it to the My Golic show. Just take all of the, because you're in a new space, you could go My Golic is something that Stugatz can turn into uh, his countermeasure to uh, Golic and Smeddy. Writing that down, Billy. When when that show, by the way, when like I found out I was going to do that show, I was at um, I was home and my boyfriend like you guys know those greeny toys uh, like dog chewy oh, things. Yeah, groys, groys, yeah. So they're called greenies and they're these green little bones. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go. I heard in the corner of the room, away from the microphone, a greenie for ESPN. So feel free to have it that before we get to the chewable, healthy greenies that dogs like its treats. Now, I've never talked to anybody. I have no idea what's going on. I've never seen anything ever. I've not talked to anybody. I don't know what's happening, but... But my boyfriend crossed out the greenie and wrote Golic on it, and I thought it was really funny, and I was going to tweet about it, and then I was like, I don't know, like this might be a little too spy. I don't want to get involved with anything here. I think you guys should be building up the beef there. I think on your show, Golic and Smeddy, you need For to- For like, sure. Yeah. He needs to rip Greenberg. You we need an official statement. Yeah. But yes. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I can do it, but I don't want to, yeah. like, Mike is like a, he's just like we a professional. We need it from Golic. Like, rip like, him. You need yeah, that quote of like, of you know, greenie's the worst. Golic. Are you Are you going to actually make him later in life as he is a malleable? lovable man that people uh, like his professionalism but he's trying to keep up with the kids I do believe you have a content opportunity here by milking Mike Golick for ripping Mike Greenberg and sowing more seeds of how did it really end I, I believe you can produce some good content maybe make some news for Golick and Smeddy does this end with Greeny slapping Mike on stage at the ESPYs or something. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, but you should just keep pissing him off. Keep poking the bear. Yeah, I, I yeah. like yeah. pissing off. Yes, Mike. that's what you should do. That's right. what. Yeah, that's what we learned is just insult him as much as possible. Almost to the point where he's like, I don't want to do this show with her anymore. Just get me back to Stugatz. That's yep. where you want to get to. Exactly yeah. right. Hey, Billy, oh, as, <laughs> as Stugatz's <laughs> beloved producer, as the one who puts the imprint on God Bless Football, 
and stupidity. Can you give me uh, the only honesty that I can get mm. from anything in that realm and tell me how he really feels about Matt Ryan appearing with Golick and Smitty? I know you guys covered this in the podcast, but I want the truth. Like, n- not. Oh, with- he's livid. What do you mean the truth? Yeah. Yeah, he's he's upset. He's not pissed. hiding it. Yeah, right. he said immediately, what is this guy doing? Why is he taking this to Golik and Smeddy? This should be on us. You have to understand the frustration where we're asking Golik all the time. I booked Andy Reid for Mike Golik using his name. I booked Frank Reich using Mike Golik's name. We are constantly asking Golik, hey, who's in that Rolodex of yours? Can we go mm-hmm. through it? And he always says he doesn't keep the contacts, this, that. Chris has them all. Chris is his wife. And then all of a sudden, new show with Smeddy. He's trying to impress everyone, including Jess, and they're trying to. It worked. Well, whatever. I mean, Matt Ryan, I've been I asking him for Matt, and now I'm going to get Mitchell Trubisky this week. I, I love mean, Mitchell Trubisky, but Stu, guys, what, what? What, what game are you going to play with Matt Ryan? You're going to do Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan out? That's what I was thinking. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh man, now I'm really jealous. What are you going to do for Trubisky? I haven't thought about it yet. Yeah, get to work. Yeah, I will. We're not getting Trubisky. That's also going to go to yeah. Trubis- no It's all going to Jess. Yeah, I don't think so. I asked. Uh, no. I asked Sid Gola because she has all the numbers. She said she will get us Mitchell Trubisky uh, because she felt really bad. That uh, they didn't get us, Matt Ryan. She, she doesn't did. feel bad. I don't believe I that know. for a second. Uh, yeah, I, is she I getting never married in like yeah. a couple weeks? Why yeah. would she feel bad about Billy, guests putting on Billy, your show? Is there, the Billy, yeah. as you, you as the producer of Stugatz, and you are a you you love Stugatz, and you are a good yeah. protector <laughs> of Stugatz. Thank a lot you, of him lately. Can we get some of the honest stories I, of just what it is to wrangle him, what it is to produce him, uh, what it is to try and get him to do his job? No, can, no, no. Like this is. I, I don't know what's going on, but Stugatz has a rocket up his ass. This is a different oh. Stugatz where it's like nonstop. Like during this show Hell alone, yeah. he's like, "We should do something with Adnan." I'm like, "Well, Chris is going to do. Something. Oh, we should do something with Adnan and Ben Lyons." Like, "Well, Adnan's doing something." With him. Oh, we should do something. With <laughs> Everyone's me. taken. Yeah, I mean. it's all of a sudden he wants to do an Oscar recap show. It's like Stugatz, we don't need to do eight shows a week. Like we're we're good. Let's just focus. Let's get one show at a time. Let's get that done. But he, man, he's ready. He's ready. And I don't know if it's. The fact that it's there's the new blood in yeah. here. Yeah, it probably is a rocket up his ass. I don't know if it's the fact that Golik has moved on, so now we're going on to, like, plan B or what we're doing here. But, like, mm-hmm. we're making stuff. Like, we're Golik, recording. Oh, wow. Golik we're has, my stuff. Golik has moved on. You're you're alleging because Stugatz has been trying to get on to the Golik. Don't regret it. Uh, on to the Golik coattails for pardon? the entire time we were at ESPN. He was trying to make that magic. And so there might be real jealousy here that Jessica has swooped in and is now doing an actual podcast with uh, that's Notre Dame based. That's very popular. It's skyrocketed. Not Notre Dame based. It's uh, don't pigeonhole them. Uh, th- well, thank I you, mean, Stu. You're welcome. <laughs> I got weird, your back. He's See weird that? about this too. Like I don't know if he's trying to get credit for that podcast and like running that podcast, but like I believe he's made himself a consultant on this podcast without no actually telling anyone. No one's consulted me on anything. If they did, I would have told them to get Matt Ryan on with me. <laughs> Except now you're trying to steal Mitch Trubisky. Why would you get Mitch Trubisky? I'm a Steelers fan. He's a Steelers quarterback. I don't know. They're going to probably draft someone, but I still... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't want you to have him, to be honest, okay? <laughs> it's, it's not about Mitch now Trubisky the at truth. all. Now we finally see the truth. <laughs> Getting back to Chris Cody and Mike Ryan's point about value young. Value at a quarterback position where Russell Wilson and the... The Seahawks dynasty quietly died last year, Stugatz. And was it, it was it died di- a couple of years ago. Well, but ago. it's been yeah. dying. But, the, you know, at the end of games, you still expected Russell Wilson to be in the game at the end. It was also one. We can move on. But it was one title, not a dynasty. Fair enough. Okay, like, totally fair point. Now we can move uh, on. Yeah, I know that you're vigilant about stamping that out wherever it makes like an dynasties, appearance. Be careful. Anywhere that Everyone's people, throwing that word around. Now, I you mean, know what? Geez. You're right. The era of Seahawks football, where they were championship contenders, Every year. I stand corrected. Legion Stugatz. of Boom. Yeah. Uh, it was when the Legion of Boom could be afforded because they had a young, cheap quarterback that soon, piece by piece, the more they paid Russell Wilson in power and money, the more pieces they lost <laughs> on the other side of the defense that helped also get him there. It was just amazing to watch. And then it expired and Russell Wilson, let's ride. <laughs> like, I mean, he just used it all up and then gets out of there. It's like, woo, Denver looks closer to this. All right, let me steal some money over here. See if they are bothered by my company man stuff as much as my teammates were on the great defense I had back there. Let's ride. I'm out of here. Mahomes got the $450 million. He got the giant contract, and I'm not going to say their window was when he was value and underpaid, 
but their greatest chance to build all the right pieces and afford them and keep them around him was absolutely when Mahomes was cheap. Christian Kirk goes to Jacksonville, wide receiver market changes, and Tyreek Hill puts his name on something I hadn't heard anywhere, which is, no, I was always picking Miami. And it was like, wait a minute, where, where and how did all that happen where you already had made the transaction that you were out of there and that the whole landscape has changed? And part of the reason, we, talk, we covered it as a Miami show, caring about the Dolphins, and we're like, holy shit, the Dolphins are in the game for one of the big names in speed, and they're going to try and be an expensive and uh, interesting offense. But the other part of this, outside of Miami, that makes the move seismic in a way that wide receivers changing teams usually doesn't, is it's that guy on that team. That guy on that team was something that we could all agree he makes the enemy and Andy Reid look like they have a better tool chest than everyone else in the league where you're just watching and it's like, oh, they can throw bubble screens and they can go down the field so precise in 13 seconds that yep. Buffalo knows, keep them out of field goal range. You cannot stop Tyreek Hill here. You cannot stop Travis Kelsey. What are you going to do about it? we got 13 seconds to save our season. You know. You know where we're going. You know it's going to be one of these two guys. And, Bills, you're great at defense. That's a championship defense. What are you going to do about it? Lose is what you're going to do about it. Right, you can't stop it. And when the margin of error is that, when the margin of error is your quarterback last year didn't look the same because he turned the ball over more and got kind of average results, or I, I don't know if it's unlucky, but he was a more reckless quarterback than that before last year, and last year the interceptions caught up to him. And they didn't win the championship. And they were 13 seconds from being knocked out even earlier with Tyreek Hill. When the margin's that in games being decided by field goals, yeah, it's going to hurt to lose Tyreek Hill. Like, indisputably, period. Like, I, you might think Mahomes will still be great. You can't lose a player who's unlike well, any single player in the league and think right. Mahomes is going to be exactly the same thing that he was. Um, that goes that goes without saying. But can they still be? Can can Mahomes still be great? And can they still be great as a team to go to Super Bowls and win Super Bowls? And I believe they can if they replace him with some wide receivers. They signed Juju Smith Schuster. Odell Beckham's still out there. He's rumored to maybe be interested. But you, you say they got Kansas not, City. These are not people that can duplicate well hold on mike replicate but they, what tyree killed no one can no. but they also have a bunch of draft picks and it's a good wide receiver a draft class. i'm not saying you're gonna get close to tyree kill but can you get close enough right and can can patrick mahomes make someone's production match right. what they could do but i think it goes beyond production with tyree kill just because you have no idea how important him cutting off the top of a defense is when it's not just the threat of tyree kill it's a threat like Dan articulated. It's a threat of Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. And holy shit, who do I have to worry about swinging out of the backfield, catching a swing pass because I have all my defenders uh, like worried about those two threats. I think it's a, a, a seismic shift in the AFC, which no matter the struggles that Kansas City went through last year, every team was afraid of that offense that combination of talent, and they had to practically beat themselves with their inability to just be disciplined and run the ball. The, the Bengals got lucky in that game, got lucky, and now that dynamic threat that was there for three, four years in Kansas City, I don't think we'll ever see anything like that again. It is rare to have, Stugatz, a guy that – Everyone watching their television sees in the most athletic of leagues. That dude's a lot faster than everyone else. Not a little bit faster. It's like Lamar Jackson. That dude yeah. is a lot faster than everyone else. You do not just replace that with Juju Smith-Schuster. I know you don't just replace it, but I believe in the quarterback, and that's the most important position on the field still, they, regardless they, of all these wide they, receivers but they being got paid. The, they also got the haul. They better when the talent is, is as unique as what we're talking about. But I ask you, as Mike brings up the question, I'm, I'm asking you because you're not – I don't think that you're telling me what you think is going to be happen here. To say that, that the Chiefs are going to be contenders, 
is not hard to say. I believe they will be that when they have this quarterback. But will they be that offense that 13 seconds you still have to fear? Will they be that offense no. that, that that will but they put up 29 points and you're like, what happened? Why were they so bad today? But, Dan, they played that football game once. In the rare occasion, if they ever play it again, yes, they'll meet, they'll miss Tariq but, Hill. But, and, it's not, and it's not just about straight line speed. Anthony Schwartz was a straight line speedster with track speed for the Cleveland Browns. And if I could identify the worst wide receiver in the league, I might have settled on Anthony Schwartz. It's a game breaking quality that very few in that league had. You see with Debo Samuel, you see with Tyree Kill. There's plenty of people in the NFL. Chris Olave is entering the NFL and everyone's pointing to him. Look at the the speed that he put up at the 40 uh, yard dash. Can you be fast when you're juking people out of their cleats? Can you be fast with pads on? Can you be fast amongst fast people? I don't know what I'm doing here in terms of, like, I'm not trying to say they won't miss Tariq Hill. He's a generational player. He's a fantastic player, fastest guy on the field. I just believe in the quarterback more, and because I do, and I believe that they can replace Tariq Hill, not to the level of Tariq Hill, but they can come close with a couple of wide receivers. They could be be good. If you have that quarterback with that tight end and that coach, can you win another Super Bowl? I don't know. I think so. They're going to have to do it different ways, the same way Tom Brady did it different ways when he had a weapon like Randy Moss. Correct. Never won with Moss. Lost, by the way, and he had to he had to yeah. change up his but you game. Do it and you with see- wins. I'm I'm sorry, but you're doing it. I I really am looking at this and basically asking you because I want to pin you down on this. Okay. You can find a way to make the argument. We've seen the best of Patrick Mahomes. Not I'm not not wins. Not are they going to say be the com- same about Tariq Hill? Not, not are they going to be competitive? Not anything else. You can and that I I want to see how far you're willing to take. You believe there's going to be a depreciation, but you're not putting any. You're not assigning any value to what it is. You're like, well, they'll compete anyway. And I'm asking you, how's it going to look different? Like, do you think Patrick Mahomes is going to be 45 touchdowns and 12 interceptions? And that team again. I'm going to say it again. That team, when they scored 29 points, you're like, what's wrong with their offense? Right. He was 37 and 13 last year with Tariq Hill. It's I think you're you're right to wonder, is the Chiefs offense going to be as unstoppable when arguably at the peak of their powers over the last few years, you had the most unstoppable quarterback in the NFL, the most unstoppable wide receiver in the NFL, and the most unstoppable tight end in the NFL all simultaneously. That's a pretty high watermark to try to reach. I mean, Danny's 26, Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, he's 26 but years I'm, old. I'm not, please don't don't put it on me anymore. Ant, just answer me what you think the depreciation is going to be. I'm not. Not enough where I, they won't compete for championships. No, Sugats, I'm asking do you. Do I to, think they'll win a championship with no, Patrick Sugats, Mahomes? stop making it about winning. I'm, stop making well, it that's about what it's winning. About. No, but I'm trying to isolate how much worse you think he's going to be. And if you believe that. Worse in terms of productivity and not productivity, results. Productivity, numbers, numbers, offense, what they look like. The the thing, the reason I'm asking you that is because right. I believe we've seen the last of that. I believe we just saw the best incarnation of what explosive all over the field is because they had somebody at that position that no one else in the league has, and it made us all realize, Stugatz, because this was a fairly sudden thing. Oh, look at how much more Andy Reid knows than everybody else. Sure. Man, they scheme a lot different. He wasn't one of these new age guys. He's not one of these young bloods. It was all of a sudden we all realized it at once, and it's a lot easier to do when you've got somebody who all of us while watching on television are like, holy shit, that guy's so much faster than everybody else. Do I think he'll go for 50 touchdowns and 12 interceptions ever again? Probably not. That's what he did three years ago. He hasn't been nearly as good with Tariq Hill uh, since he wa- uh, as he was three years ago when he went 50 and 12. Do I think he'll go 4,000 yards, 4,500 yards with 38 touchdowns and 13 interceptions? Absolutely, yes, I do. I figured out what game you're going to play with Mitch Trubisky oh, if it? you have him in. Which? Trubisky or false Bisky. Wow. I love yeah. it. You want to join us? I mean, what do you think? <laughs> Billy, I'll invoice you for that one. <laughs>